Tonight on CTV, we hear about how new AI software can be changed in the academic world. Then stick around for an inside look into Fort Collins Mardi Gras. All this and more tonight on CTV. Good evening, Rams. I'm Jay Jimmy Kenny. And I'm Naomi Homer. Thank you for joining us tonight. An elderly woman was kidnapped Tuesday evening in her own car. The woman was waiting for her husband while she was shopping when the suspect, Cesar Bougron, stole the car while the woman was inside the vehicle. Bougron stole the car to let, stopped the car to let the woman out where she dialed 911. Fort Collins police tracked down Bougron and he is currently in custody at the Larimer County Jail. He is currently facing an aggravated robbery of an at-risk adult, kidnapping and aggravated vehicle theft. A woman took an officer hostage with his own gun and barricaded herself in the Larimer County Police Vehicle Bay on Monday. Suspect Patricia Rodriguez, age 38, had been booked earlier on suspicion for shoplifting when the arresting officer took Rodriguez to the station and got her out of his vehicle. Rodriguez slipped out of her handcuffs and lunged at the man. She then took the officer's weapon out of his holster and threatened him with his firearm. The man on duty escaped the area while Rodriguez barricaded herself in the police car. The County Sheriff's deputies, the crisis response team, and Fort Collins SWAT team were able to lose non-lethal lethal tools to get Rodriguez to surrender. After the situation was resolved, the alleged suspect is, was rebooked and is now currently being charged with first-degree felonies, counts of assault, aggravated robbery, and kidnapping. A man was hit by a vehicle while fleeing from a routine traffic stop on Interstate 25 near the Mountain Vista exit last weekend. Larimer County Sheriff deputies stopped a 2012 Ford Fusion that had expired registration while they were exiting the I-25 late Saturday night. The Larimer County Sheriff said that the man driving the car ran towards the interstate after being confronted for using a fake name and asked to step out of the vehicle. The deputies deployed their taser as the man ran away, but it is yet to be confirmed if the taser actually hit him before he was struck by a passing vehicle. He was later pronounced dead at the nearby hospital. Northern Colorado's Drug Task Force has made another successful bust right here in Fort Collins. Seven people were arrested on Friday after high-risk warrants were released for two homes on northbound Shield Street. During the search, law enforcement found fentanyl, methamphetamines, counterfeit currency, and stolen property. According to reports from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office, one of the suspects resisted arrest and obstructed an officer. If you have any information on the case, you are encouraged to call the Drug Tip Hotline at 970-416-2560. Your tip can be anonymous. The weather is very <laughs> cold. It's been really chilly outside, and I'm really not a fan of it. Nah, I hate it. Me, personally, I, I just want it to be warm again. You know, no. I'm, I'm kind of wondering when that's going to be. Hopefully soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's head over to our, weather, Ad, well, to our weatherman, Adam Carlson, to see if these winter storms will last us into the weekend. Adam? Thanks, JJ. Good evening, Rams. My name is Adam Carlson, and I'm here to give you your weather rundown for the evening. After a week filled with high hopes and disappointments with the weather, let's see if we have the promise of the oh-so-desired snow day. Current conditions, 8 degrees outside with some snow going on. Not too much you can expect, no more than an inch from tonight. And uh, wind at 5 miles per hour still fairly light. Now, snow and cold have been the talk of the campus this whole week. Tuesday night, both Poudre and Thompson uh, had some snow days going on, and it was just chaotic. A lot of CSU students were really hoping for that snow day, and it just didn't happen, disappointing a lot of our students here. Now, what can we expect for tonight's lows? Generally, it's tens or single digits and tens across the uh, I-25 corridor and east and western slopes. Uh, Alamosa and Grand Junction hitting us with curveballs 21 and 30. Craig up at 6 and Telluride with an avalanche warning. In the eastern plain, we have 
10 or middle single digits with Lamar being our high at 8. But tomorrow things will be heating up generally 30s and 40s across the I-25 corridor and Eastern Plain. And then once we head over into the mountains, things are warmer even then. Uh, 41 in Grand Junction, Alamosa. Craig 29. Then tomorrow's forecast, we have a 35 as our high. Much nicer than it's been with the single digits and negatives here. And it's going to be a bit cloudy, but humidity at 63% and only wind at 5 miles per hour. Now, heading into your weekend and next week, things are going back to the 40s, keeping things a lot nicer. Now, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to get more cloudy weather. And who knows if after that we'll return to more winter or if it's going to be springtime here in Fort Collins. But that will bring me to the end of the weather rundown for you all tonight. Back to you guys. Thanks, Adam. The apartment fire that displaced six people, hospitalized two, and killed a dog early last week has hit another development as a woman saved her husband from a fire in an amazing act of bravery. Fort Collins resident Andrea Kiever sprang into action when she saw that her husband had caught on fire while on the couch. The fire had spread to Kiever's husband's oxygen tank, which engulfed his leg in flames. During the crisis, Kiever was able to drag her husband out of the apartment complex and onto their porch. Poudre Fire Authority was eventually able to put out the inferno, but not before it had already claimed the lives of two of the pets Kiever was watching, while her husband suffered third-degree burns in the process. Following the tragedy, Kiever's home, along with others who had lived in the apartment complex, had their building deemed temporarily unlivable, meaning they're currently displaced in the midst of this frigid cold weather. Kiever also lost her belongings in the fire. If you or anyone you know wants to help Kiever and her husband through this difficult time, please check out the GoFundMe link below in the description of this live stream. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around because sports reporter Peyton Hagens is here to give you a preview of the upcoming Border War game. Living with someone you don't know on the other side of the wall is hard, especially if you don't know how to be a good roommate. The first thing that you'll want to do to be a good roommate is make sure that you always stay quiet. Be considerate of others when using common spaces and appliances. Hey buddy, what you doing? I'm just gonna need like 40 minutes. Be respectful of your roommate's privacy. Ugh, my bad. Finally, make sure that you clean up after yourself. Oh, a fresh toothbrush. Have you seen my toothbrush? Follow these tips to get along with your roommates and your landlord. Welcome back from the break, Rams. I'm Peyton Hagens. Let's head indoors for some college hoops. After an expected defeat to 22nd ranked SDSU on Tuesday, the Rams return home for a crucial matchup with bitter rivals Wyoming, and the stakes are a little different compared to last year. Whereas both teams are striving for an NCAA tournament bids, in 2023, last place in the Mountain West is on the line. But regardless of the records, nothing feels better than a home game win against the Pokes. Despite this, the Cowboys did knock off a solid New Mexico squad nine days ago on the road. And honestly, it wasn't really close, 14 points to be exact. Wyoming may be having a rough season, but at times the Pokes have proven to keep up with just about anyone. And that includes CSU. Don't forget the Rams lost to Wyoming in Laramie about a month ago. Much has changed since then though, so let's see how the teams stack up in round two. And the numbers are relatively close, but shockingly, CSU actually ranks higher in nearly every category. Most notably, the Rams shoot a whopping five percentage points up better than the Cowboys. I'm honestly shocked it's that high. In any case, both parties haven't had the seasons they were expecting in the slightest, but a competition between two of the worst teams in the Mountain West could get a little crazy, right? I guess we'll just have to see how tomorrow plays out. Back to you guys. Thanks, Peyton. Being able to keep up with basic needs is no small feat as a student in Fort Collins. 
Along with heavy class loads, students are also just learning how to sustain themselves in college. And when it comes to buying groceries, students and many Fort Collins residents are having more trouble picking up the bill. In Larimer County, nearly 30,000 people are facing food insecurity today. And this month, the Federally Allocated Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, emergency benefits will be ending. During the pandemic, extra SNAP benefits were allotted to anybody who needed them. With these going away, this means an entire grocery trip could be off the table. And this is why certain people on campus, like Michael Buttram, are here to help. More and more students are facing basic needs shortfalls. And these shortfalls may be in terms of food insecurity, they may be in terms of housing insecurity, transportation, but often those type of things walk in tandem, so it might be a, a shortfall on all of those terms. But this does not mean there is a shortfall of resources available. Student case managers work closely with Rams Against Hunger to help students with their needs. There isn't a wrong door, really, at CSU, right? Reach out to somebody for support. And the Larimer County Food Bank has resources for students and residents to take full advantage of. So we're prepared for as many people that need food, we will, we will have food available for people. We have a Rams Against Hunger pantry. It's a full client choice shopping experience where you can find bread, um, often milk and dairy and produce, always produce, shelf stable items, frozen items, cereals, and you should be able to cut your grocery bill in half. The ultimate goal is to help anyone and everyone who is in need. So the impact for the food bank is, I hope the word gets out, that if people need help, if they're food insecure and they need food, they'll come to the food bank and, and get more food. Sure, someone else might need it more. And if you need it at all, it is yours to use. With SNAP emergency benefits ending this month, it's good to know how many resources are here for everybody in Larimer County to utilize. To find more information on Rams Against Hunger resources, you can visit their page on the Lori Student Center website. I was honestly blown away by how many resources they have in Fort Collins and even on campus for people who are facing in food insecurity. It's amazing. It's kind of really nice to know that even if times are hard for students, that the university and Fort Collins in general, have, like, they have our backs. Exactly, especially with SNAP benefits going away. I know some people might be a little bit nervous about that, but going around and being able to speak to all these people who put a lot of effort into making sure that people aren't like missing a meal or anything like that, I thought was an amazing just thing for somebody to do. Of course, Naomi, you want to know another resource for students? Hmm. AI, that's right. Artificial intelligence is on the rise, but with it comes rising concerns of academic dishonesty from school administrators and staff with this type of artificial tech officially having made its way to CSU in the form of ChatGPT, which can write papers effortlessly at the push of a button. And it has people all across campus taking notice. ChatGPT is spreading like wildfire with students across campus, with the new software being used from essay writing to coding. The new AI software has gotten people more curious about the future of AI, and computer science professor Nikhil Krishnaswamy is here to provide more insight. So ChatGPT is a large generative language model. Um, in particular, it's one that's optimized for dialogue. Um, but it is very good at putting together information from different sources and presenting it in a way that sounds plausibly generated by humans. However, some people don't know how to actually use ChatGPT. Fortunately, I was able to get the chance to try it out myself. ChatGPT can be used for a variety of things in any topic, literally any topic that you can even imagine. Like so, Let's say we want to write about 1996 Chicago Bulls. Just like that. The quick writing and thinking of the software has created new ways of learning in the classroom. I've used ChatGPT to like kind of answer some of the questions. There's more knowledge that I think you can get from computer AI to answer kind of more technical questions. But not everyone is pleased with ChatGPT's arrival, with teachers raising concerns. Now it might, you know, give you some structure to your writing, but, you know, I've told my students that their work needs to be their own work. It's not going to sound like it came from you. Whether it's considered a form of plagiarism or a new tool, it seems ChatGPT is here to stay. I'm mean, going to think that as a university, we should be developing some kind of coherent position toward how we're going to address this. 
Professor Krishnaswamy insists that while this technology is new and an exciting step forward towards the future, it can also be intimidating to some. But we may not want to buy into the massive hype surrounding it too much, at least not yet. At the end of the day though, AI is still meant to be a tool that serves humans in making the world a more efficient place. To see how AI will affect the future of baseball and overall human civilization, check out the most recent CTV Sports and CTV Geeks show. The war in Ukraine may have a lasting impact on the United States and even in your own backyard, according to Ukraine's former ambassador, William Taylor, who will be the keynote speaker at CSU's International Symposium next week. Taylor served as the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine in 2006 to 2009, while also temporarily took place as ambassador for the U.S. Embassy in Kiev in 2019, before transitioning to work for the U.S. Institute for Peace. The former representative will share his insight on Ukraine and how their long invasion by Russia to the wider campus community. Telling CSU's source earlier this week, I hope that an understanding of the war's significance will lead to a contribution to the broad support that exists right now for Ukraine on a bipartisan bias across the country. Taylor will be speaking to the symposium this Tuesday and it will be free and open to the public to attend in the Laurie Student Center's Ballroom D. The presidential election is next year, with multiple politicians throwing their hat in the ring for a chance to sit in the Oval Office. Now, one Fort Collins native thinks he has what it takes to be the next leader of the United States. Businessman and former Mayor of Cranston, Rhode Island, Steve Laffey, has announced his presidential campaign for the 2024 election. The self-described fiscal conservative is now running against former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley for the Republican nomination. Laffey has a background in business with a finance with wealth management firms, in addition to his former mayor, mayoral duties back from 2003 to 2007, a background that Laffey says makes him fit for running the country. If elected, Laffey promises to work on the country's Social Security, a system that he says has been broken and mismanaged. With the announcement, Laffey now aims to hit the campaign trail. He plans to learn about more citizens' needs and issues all the way to election night in November 2024. Fort Collins furry friends have a new place to visit when they are feeling under the weather. VCA Animal Hospitals opened its first urgent care in location in northern Colorado, right here in Fort Collins. The urgent care opened last week, and they are already taking in patients in need of timely but not life-threatening care. This new vet hospital aims to help pets who may be too sick to wait for an appointment with their primary veterinarian but not too ill for a trip to the emergency room. With Fort Collins being listed as the third most dog-friendly city in the U.S. by Rocket Homes, VCA says they are happy to be one of the few bridges between general practice and emergency care for animals in the area. Now live in the studio is our feature reporter Zoe Weir is here to tell you how she spent Mardi Gras Fort Collins style. Zoe? Thanks guys. As someone who loves glitter, colored beads, and king cake, I had to attend the Mardi Gras event, Fort Collins style. Although, walking down Bourbon Street in New Orleans would have been the best scenario, the event hosted at Foothills Mall was the perfect dupe. Well, we know that there aren't a lot of Mardi Gras events in the Northern Colorado area, and we have what are called sister properties around the country. So there are some in Texas and some in California, and one big tradition um, at our sister properties is a big Mardi Gras celebration, and they go all out with like a marching band, and they have like, like whole meals, and like it's huge. Um, and so we're just getting started, so what we did this time around is we offered some king cake and some other, you know, little knickknacks and... Mardi Gras related, uh, you know, gift bag items, um, just to you know, surprise and delight. But in future years, we are hoping to make this a bigger event with live music and some other features as well. Let's go here with the attendees, think about this event. The part of that Mardi Gras event was probably the, the cake, the baby inside it. Uh, my favorite part was probably all the decorations and the cake was just so good.
around. They are always making sure to hit every celebration and create a fun environment for all. It's a great reason to get out of the house and for this specific event, get your Marty on. That's all we have for you right now, but stick around because Peyton Hagens and Bella Walzer are here to tell you all about CSU's snow sports. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, Rams? I'm Peyton Higgins, and welcome to Thursday Night Sports. Tonight, I'll bring you to the slopes for a glimpse at CSU's Alpine Ski Team. So without further ado, let's get into it. Though the backcountry may not be right here on campus, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado are a huge attraction for many. From residents to visitors, people travel far and wide to partake in its winter sports. And yet many don't know that right here in Fort Collins, CS CSU has its own version of just that. Though the backcountry may not be right here on campus, the CSU Alpine Ski Team is still making big runs to represent the green and gold. My freshman year, um, I joined the CSU Ski Team, and uh, our coach now was the president and really got me into it. The welcoming nature is exactly what entices many students. I've met a lot of people, which has been really fun, and um, yeah, like this team has been such a great experience to be a part of. And their positive attitudes are a necessity because their schedule can be relentless once January hits. We travel almost every weekend, so they're honestly like a second family, like, you know, everyone's business, which can be great, <laughs> but, you know, maybe not great at the same time. This dedicated effort extends to even the highest levels. We usually have roughly like four to five uh, in-conference races, and then we have regionals, which is the whole entire Northwest, including us and Montana and all of them. And then we have nationals, which either goes from the West um, side of the United States or the East side. But like every other sport, skiing requires hard work and determination to compete with the best. They take the top five men's and women's teams, and those teams can go to nationals. This year, nationals is at Mammoth Lakes, California. Um, so we're hoping to qualify for a second year in a row. A big aspect of qualifying, though, is having enough members. And thankfully, CSU doesn't have that issue this time around. This year we have 20 people, which is a lot different than last year, because last year when we qualified for nationals, we only had eight people on the team. So it's a big change, but it's great. I love it. The growth in membership has further contributed to the team's dynamic. Like, I know I have a constant support system always, so, like, if I need help with anything, whether that's school or life in general. Um, I know I have a whole team to back me up with it, and I'm not alone in anything. And their message to the CSU community supports exactly that. We're really open to any skiers, any skill level. As long as you can make it down the hill, um, we would love to have you. It just brings a lot of fun into the sport, too, and it's not just about winning all the time. It's just a community and we all support each other. So I hope people who are kind of thinking about it, they know like it's open to anybody and we would love to have as many people as we can because that's just what makes it fun. Even with the snow falling in sub 20 temperatures, it was such a cool experience to get to see this group in action. The team is currently up in Idaho at Bogus Basin competing in nationals. Hopefully, the men and women can place high enough to compete in nationals for the second straight year. And speaking of, 
Snow Sports CTV's very own Bella Walzer also spent some time in the cold this week. Thanks, Peyton. Do you like snow skiing at all? Um, I don't ski, but I snowboard kind of. Do you? Okay. I snow ski a bit, but oh, okay. definitely not as good as the team, but I no. can make it down the mountain. Fair. You thought all of the Valentine's Day buzz was over? Think again. CSU snow and free riders flocked to Eldora Mountain last weekend for their second annual Galentine's event, which was another day full of fun dedicated to connecting female skiers and snowboarders. The Galentine's Day event is all about bringing women together in a comfortable setting, welcoming skiers and snowboarders of any level. The event came out of wanting to support the female and non-binary and femme-leaning community within the skiing and snowboarding community. The energy of like all men on the mountain can be very intimidating for girls and like an event like this brings us all together to kind of like hype each other up and just make room and make us available on the mountain and be seen kind of thing. Along with the awesome charcuterie board set up, Attendees were given a free lunch right before participating in multiple games with the chance to win some prizes. I love uplifting women in the community because it is a very male dominated sport and we're also aware of the different groups and classes that are involved in it. And so to try to make this event as accessible as possible is also one of our goals. So that's why we come to Eldora. That's why we open it up to not just be members only and just really making all the the women and non-binary people in our community feel like they have a place um, and they have a safe place that they can go to. People are here being themselves and not feeling different social pressures or social norms. People are here to solely be themselves, however that is, whatever they take feminine like energy as. I had so much fun seeing the feminine community empower each other on the mountain, which included so many people introducing themselves to new friends helping each other grow in the sport, and a lot of dancing. I had a great time last weekend. Do you guys like to snow ski or anything at all? I'm not a huge snowboarder or skier. I think I've snowboarded a few times, but I'm not great at it. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm kind of the same. I've actually never been. You should. Yeah. Being in Colorado, That's you should. Yeah, I, at this point, I really should have at this. So mm -hmm. maybe we can all have like a CTV trip. Yeah, oh that sounds yeah. good. Let's that go on a so ski trip. <laughs> Expensive, but I think we can find some way to make it work. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. But check out our YouTube channel for more content all week. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night.